There's a verse, I think it's chapter 24, verse 59. Yes? Surah Nur. Or it says, al min al-Nisa. The old women of the Nisa, of the old women of the, uh, the old women, yeah? And it says that they can, uh, they, they can take their thiab off. What's thiab? It's, it's a cloth, clothing, yeah? Now, the, the, the first question I ask the person who believes that, because usually the person who believes that the hijab is not, the khimar is not the hijab. That's what their argument, yeah? Their argument that the khimar mentioned in Surah An-Nur and the jilbab, Surah Al-Ahzab, those two, they believe that they are not hijab over the head. They believe it's over the breasts. They believe it's what? Over the breasts. So when it says, uh, So let them throw the uh, khimars over the jub. They say it just means cover your breasts. So I say, okay, no problem. In chapter 24, verse 59, when it talks about those old women, is it saying that they can show their breasts? No, no, no. That, that's what the implication is. If the thiab that they can take off is the khimar, and the khimar or the jilbab is what you, you cover your breasts, then according to you, you can take off, yes, you can show the old woman, older woman now, because she can show her breasts in public. Okay, is, this the, is this your interpretation? They usually run around and say, no, this and that. And Listen, this is the implication of what you're saying. And that's why you have to have a holistic, contextualized understanding of the Quran and Sunnah before you make humiliating mistakes. No, 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 that, that's what the implication is. If the thiab that they can take off is the khimar, and the khimar or the jilbab is what you, you cover your breast, then according to you, you can take off, yes, you can show the old woman, older woman now, because she can show her breast in public. So we, we come now to verse number 60. And it says basically, uh, uh, As for the women who are past the age of childbearing and do not uh, intend to get married, uh, there is no sin on them if they should do away with the outer garments. Okay. Um, thiab is the is the plural for for thaub, which means uh, a large outer cloak that might be worn over above the house dress. Now you were questioning so, yeah. me about the house dress. Yes. <laughs> so, so what's the thiab? So, what's the so thaub? So here here we back to explanations mm -hmm. that are given in the in the books of uh, commentary. Uh, the explanations typically uh, capitalize on this differentiation between the house dress and the outer cloak. Okay. So the outer cloak may be called thiab, as in, in this, thiab is the plural, thaub is singular. Thaub is still being used today if to, to refer usually to a man's garment. Mm -hmm. A large garment like I'm wearing here would be called a thaub. Mm -hmm. And uh, so thiab is the plural. So uh, apparently women at the time, according to the classical commentators, and as I said, this is indisputable. Everybody agrees that this is what used to happen. Um, whether it's fictional or not, but this is what is all agreed upon. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the women used to have the house dress that they would wear at home. Their brothers and, and, and so on can see them in that dress. It's not indecent, but their arms would be exposed and so on because they go about their daily chores. Uh, when they're ready to go out of the house, they would put on the large outer cloak. Um, that's called a thaw or plural thiab. So uh, for the women who are now past the age of childbearing, and do not intend to get married. In other words, they're not going to go flaunt themselves to try and attract the opposite gender. Uh, they are allowed to cast off the thia, the, the thaub. Uh, they, they don't have to wear that outer garment. In other words, the kind of house dress they wore at home uh, in the presence of their brothers and men with whom they, they feel safe, like their servants and so on, who do not have any desire towards them. Uh, they, uh, they can wear the same house dress when they go out. They don't have to have the outer cloak. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so it's no sin on them. And, but the verse continues to say, uh, But if they uh, remain uh, modest, this is, this is better for them. Mm. So you can see here that there's a differentiation between what is the requirement and, and what is, um, you might say, uh, a more ideal, more ideal, or uh, you know, in Islamic law, we have a differentiation between fard, which is required, 
and and nuffle, which is uh, superfluous, and uh, you get reward if you do it, but you don't get any sin if you leave it off. So here we can say that uh, it would be far for the woman to have her house dress still, and if she dons an outer garment over and above that, this is nuffle. It is for an older woman. For an older woman, yeah. yeah. So she would get reward for that. But she does not have any sin if she was to throw it off, because the verse is very clear. They shall have no sin mm. if they were to cast it off. Okay. So, so we have a basic requirement, and then we have some addition on top of that. We can see this in all of Islamic law, and we see it when it comes to the dress of men. But somehow, uh, when it comes to the dress of women, this differentiation is not uh, often enough made. And uh, people speak as if the whole woman has to be covered from top to bottom, and, and there is no kind of um, leeway for, for any part to be exposed. As if mm -hmm. you expose one part, it's as if you expose the whole body. So you may as well have been walking naked the way you might be accused.